I am Anu Agarwal and I reside in the Microphotonic Center slash Materials Processing Center at MIT. And our work with our team has mainly been focused on microphotonics that's on chip. So manipulation of photons on chip, just as we do electrons. This is photon manipulation on chip. And we coined this term silicon microphotonics about 20 years ago. It's really caught on now. It's called silicon nanophotonics, and you know, it's gone smaller and smaller. So the silicon microphotonics and nanophotonics work that we started out with 20 years ago focused very much on 1550 nanometer wavelength band because all telecommunications happens there. Over the years, we realized that there's this whole new space, new wavelength region that has not been explored on chip. So we decided to move into that range and we decided to go to mid-infrared and far-infrared, long-wave, mid-wave and long-wave infrared regions on chip. So manipulation of these mid-wave and long-wave photons on chip. Of course, that's great because you can expand this communication wave band hopefully further out. But what's even more exciting than that is this whole region from 3 microns to about 12 microns wavelength is exactly the wavelength region where all molecules have their absorptions, their vibrational absorptions. So it's a very key area for chemical sensing. But putting all of this on chip is a huge task. First of all, manipulation of photons is one thing, but how do you get the photons there? So we need light sources. Then we need filters because you don't want all the wave bands to interact. And you need detectors for each of those wave bands. We had a huge challenge ahead of us. We had to be able to find materials that were light sources, that transmitted light and was transparent but also absorbed. So we had to somehow find materials that were tunable. And that's exactly what we did. We started to work with calcogenide glass materials that are compositionally tunable. And therefore, you can make light sources out of them, waveguides out of them, filters out of them, and detectors out of them, all using the same sort of broad category of calcogenide glasses, which are out there in the periodic table in the bottom right, um, non-oxide glasses of arsenic, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, and so on. So we ended up trying to make sensors out of calcogenide glasses, and we were very successful at that. We chose certain compositions. For example, germanium antimony sulfide glasses are very transparent, whereas lead telluride are absorbing at certain wavelengths. So we had this challenge of making all of these on the same platform, which is silicon. And silicon for obvious reasons, because all the electronics based that we need at the bottom is right there already on silicon readout integrated circuits. So we ended up making sensors on chip for a host of chemicals. We demonstrated sensing of N-methylaniline of um, uh, some biochemicals as well. And what we saw was this opened up huge opportunities for chemical and biological sensing, not just in a small space of, say, defense, which is what we started out with, but also in water quality sensing, air quality monitoring, food monitoring. All of these are essential globally. And we found that we can use our sensors that are small, that are on chip, that are sensitive, and we can put it to use for all of these different technologies. Not just healthcare, not just industrial monitoring, but food, air, water quality as well. So these are the different applications that we envision for our sensors.